What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the channel. It's President Chip here, talking to the people of YouTube. So today we're going to be covering Kentucky versus Georgia. That's right, my Georgia Bulldogs will be taking on the Kentucky Wildcats tomorrow evening, depending on when you're watching this video. However, it will be taking place at around 7 o'clock Eastern Time, 4 o'clock Pacific or Western so, I'm just going to go over a few things real quick. First of all, I want to get through um, just the overall feelings, man, final feelings as a Georgia fan. Uh, everything's looking good, man. I mean, we got the games in Sanford, so we're going to have the home field advantage, prime time, Athens. Um, and, yeah, man, I mean, all of that, obviously, you got the home field advantage. It's going to help you out. The crowd's going to be on your side. Weather is going to look favorable for the boys, but of course, weather is not a factor in most of these games, um, because bad weather, it's bad, it's bad weather for both teams, like Uncle Lou says almost every show for some reason, but anyway, uh, so yeah, everything, everything in terms of the home field advantage and stuff like that, it's in Georgia's favor, so no excuses there. Um, now in terms of the actual, uh, in terms of the stats that matter, uh, so George is coming into this game where we really haven't had a running game. <laughs> so the idea is to have Mike Bobo change his offensive game plan so the way we can have the offense or the Georgia offense be a pass first offense because we don't have the running backs. It's simple as that. It's Deshaun Edwards and everyone else. And I understand that we can use Edwards every now and then, but with the offensive line not being perfect still. And not even being close to extremely good, and Deshaun Edwards being really our only guy who can make up those good big games on first down, second down when we need them. Uh, and along with that, we have the talent at the wide receiving position to be able to be a pass first team. Bach Bowers, Rosemary Jack Saint, Dominic Lovett, Ravar Thomas, Arian Smith, to name a few names on who will be dangerous and who can be dangerous on the passing game. And a Lamb McConkey, another one there. So I strongly believe that if my Bobo is able to utilize that offense in terms of the ability to pass the ball and that offensive line can protect back and give him enough time to throw the ball accurately, then we're going to dismantle opponents because Kentucky does not have secondary well, I believe Kentucky doesn't have the secondary to handle our passing game. But, um, but yeah, in terms of the offense, it's as simple as that. we got to be a pass-first team. So, in terms of the offense and what I want for that, I want us to work, I want us to throw the ball. I want Beck to get protection from the offensive line. I want him to just sling that ball down the field, man. And I want to get Cook in the first quarter, second, third, fourth, play all four quarters, man. Don't wait until the fourth. Don't wait until the third. Don't even wait until the second quarter to start going. Do it in the first. First drive. Get down the field. That's what I want for my Georgia Bulldogs. And that's, I think that's what we're all looking for, man. Uh, but, yeah, in terms of the offense, that's really what we're looking for. We're looking for more passing and basically play to our strengths. Simple as that. Play to our strengths. Because if we play to our strengths and our strength is the passing game, then we're going to have a lot of success. All right. So, in terms of the uh, in terms of the defensive side of things, so – Let's talk about Kentucky real quick, because Kentucky last game, uh, last weekend against the Florida Gators, you had Ray Davis who had 280 yards rushing. So you have a main man Ray Davis who had a bunch of rushing yards last uh, week again against the Florida Gators, and overall, I believe he has four, 595 yards uh, throughout the entire season. And so he's a really good and eight touchdowns, seventy six carries. So he he he's a very 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 good running back for the Kentucky Wildcats. However, he is the only weapon the Kentucky the Kentucky Wildcats have. So you shut down Ray Davis, you shut down Kentucky. Our secondary was able to hold Auburn pretty well last weekend. It's that running, it's that rush defense that concerns me. It's that front those front sevens the the defensive line. They need to hold up, man. But this is where we're missing guy, a guy like Bear Alexander in there, um, who who we could very much have used in this these types of games. But hey, next man up, he transferred away, so we got we got to use what we got, man. And these guys need to step up. Kirby Smart, and you know Kirby Smart, he may not be that good, and choose he may have made mistakes in terms of choosing a QB. 
But that's his topic for a different day. But he has always been good on his defensive game plans. For the for the most part. But I have no doubt in my mind Kirby Smart will be entering this game tomorrow. And he will have a good defensive game plan. And will be able to handle Ray Davis and the Kentucky, Wild, uh, the Kentucky Wildcats in their rushing game. And I have no doubt that we will come out of that game holding Kentucky to a minimum amount of rushing yards, even though Ray Davis has quality talent. But, like I said, that is their only quality talent. And just like just like how everybody says with Brock Bowers, even though we have much more on the offense than Brock Bowers, you cannot win a game with one quality guy. And unlike Georgia, Kentucky does not have those quality guys on offense besides Ray Davis. So, I'm going to say it right now. You shut down Ray Davis, you shut down the offense. And the secondary needs to keep holding strong, keep holding strong. That is what we need to do. And, of course, as you know, despite the yard, despite the stats, if you want to be the stat man, 396 yards through uh, four games, uh, so, excuse me, through five games for the Kentucky Wildcats. They ha- they, they've, they've, they've had some, some success on the passing. Uh, uh, excuse me, 225 uh, yards passing. So they had success on the passing game, obviously. However, they have not played a secondary like the Georgia Bulldogs. I believe that secondary will be good enough to sustain their throwing game. Like I said, not much more to say there. So again, the concern, like I said, to finish this up, to finish this segment for the defense is control the run game. Auburn put up a lot of yards against us. We cannot let Ray Davis do that. Hold Ray Davis, you hold the offense. And that is... It's as simple as that. And yeah, I guess uh, in terms of my final feelings, just get over a few, just go over a few things real quick. Uh, one key point we kind of mentioned this earlier: Carson Beck. But the offensive line, if they give him time in the pocket, where there's gonna be and there's plays where they're able to hold Kentucky's uh, blitzes or whatever they throw at us, Carson Beck needs to be as accurate as he can, man. As accurate as he can. He has the talent. He has the arm. He needs to be accurate. And for the wide receivers, you can't drop the ball. I've seen enough of Oscar Delp dropping the damn ball all the damn time. And Dominic Lovett, Robert, all of a, a bunch of our wide receivers have been dropping balls. Ball security, uh, whether it's dropping it or fumbling it, whatever. Dropping it, at, losing the football at all needs to not happen this game. It happened too much already. It can't happen against this Kentucky Wildcats team. Because despite of how trash I think they are, they're ranked, they're undefeated. They will capitalize on mistakes. I don't care what you think of Kentucky. They will capitalize it on those mistakes. So, we need to be able to stop them. We, oh, sorry, excuse me. We need to be able to stop dropping the ball. Ball security is important and it needs to happen. Because of it, because, because best believe Kentucky is going to take advantage of those opportunities like Auburn tried doing. If we fumble the ball and drop it. So that that's that's a key that's key number one. Key number two <clears throat> on the defense, we can and this is this is a further continuation of shutting down Ray Davis. If we let Ray Davis get any opening whatsoever, this man will run through everybody and we will be in trouble. This man has eight touchdowns. So, to add on the fact that the Kentucky's offenses are surrounded by that man, if it goes good, if Ray Davis has a great game, then Kentucky's offense has a great game, which means trouble for the for the Bulldogs. Because if they start getting momentum and Ray Davis starts scoring and scoring and scoring and taking that Kentucky offense, and no doubt they will get our secondary is amazing, but it's not it's not unstoppable. Kentucky will get throwing plays, throw, and they will get yards on passing. So, if Ray Davis is able to find success, that is huge trouble for us, and we cannot allow that. I I will I know I've said it a bunch already in this video, but we cannot allow that under any circumstances can we allow this man to run all over us. Because if we do, then we are in huge, huge trouble. But, um, yeah, those are really my two key points for this game to watch. Um, those are really the, the deciding factors. Um, in terms of who is going to come out of this game with a W because of how crucial 
those two are not just in the whole and not not just in general in the game of football, but specifically for how these two teams play offensively. <clears throat> but um, yeah, those those are my key points. Um, in terms of my score prediction, so I've been looking at it and looking at all the stats, looking at the teams, taking home advantage into account, all of that, assessing all the, all the stats, assessing how uh, assessing everything. I have come with my official prediction, which is this, ladies and gentlemen. 38 to 17, Georgia Bulldogs come out with the win. And I understand it. I understand Bama fans, all opposing fan bases are going to come on, who watch this video are going to comment, you said that about Auburn, President Chip. You said that about Auburn, President Chip. I know. I know I said that about Auburn. I know. So, and we only beat them by seven. But guess what? We still won. And I'm going to say it about Kentucky, too. I think we're going to handle them nice and gracefully. I think they're going to come into Athens, and they're going to get pounded. They'll put up 17 points. I, I gave them 17 points. I think I think garbage time touchdown. And I think they get 10 points in the beginning. I think they get a garbage time touchdown. That's how they get 17. But that offense is going to be cooking. 38 points. 38 to 17. Georgia Bulldogs will go 6-0. Kentucky Wildcats will go five and one, and the Georgia Bulldogs will remain one in the west, oh, sorry, <clears throat> one in the east, and will remain undefeated after this game. So that is my score prediction, man. Uh, if y'all want to disagree with me in the comments, go ahead. You will let me know your score prediction, and I hope you do not say Kentucky wins because you will be dead wrong. But uh, yeah, thirty-eight seventeen is my final score prediction. And I'll do a live watch along for the game. So, yeah, I hope to see you all there. And one last thing. Go dogs!